It's time for Nixon and Agnew Reviews! <laughs> Brought to you by... <laughs> Charlington's Battlestar Chews. If you like sci-fi too, this frackin' chews for you. <laughs> Godspeed, patriots. It's 37th President Richard Nixon here, along with the Hitler's body of Agnew. Say hello, Agnew. Ah, are. Hmm. What are we watching today, Agnew? Battlestar Galactica colon the miniseries, eh? Well, that's a clunky title. But so is oversexed alien rock suckers of Mars, and that's my favourite movie of all time. So I guess the lesson here is not to judge a book by its cover. Let's go! Three hours later. Hmm. Huh. That was pretty good, Agno. This show was brutal and pulled no punches. I especially liked how they had the balls to snap a baby's neck and nuke a little girl to kingdom come. It's like Hillary Clinton's wet dream. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start from the beginning. So the episode starts with a guy who goes to a neutral meeting place every 40 years knowing the opponents don't really care and never bother to turn up. And so he just gets on with his usual business agenda unimpeded. Hmm. Sounds like the Democrats in the Senate. And wow, look at their smoking hot lady in red. Ah, roar. A robot, you say? Oh, that's not fair, Agnew. She might have been a bit stiff, but the actress is young, and it may be her first movie role. Ow. Oh, right on. Oh, a Cylon, eh? You mean they somehow stuffed those big clunky metal things inside a smooth and svelte skin suit of that sexy, supple woman? Oh, that's good. Why didn't we think of that? Arr! Oh, we did? Jennifer Lawrence, you say? Well, that explains why she's a little bit frumpy and keeps tripping up all over the place. Man, there were so many characters in this show. I think there was even more guys in this thing than there was in the Blazing Squad. Remember them? See you at the crossroads, crossroads, crossroads. Arr! Starbuck. Starbuck, eh? Wasn't he a dude in the first movie, played by some guy called Dirk Benedict? They have some crazy names, like that doctor fella, Gaius Baltar. Sounds like a Roman pimp at the local whorehouse. Arr, or arr. But that sexy woman didn't even get a name. Arr? Number six? I suppose that's better than being number two. I still can't believe the Secretary of Education somehow became leader of the colonies. I mean, they made a glorified teacher the goddamn president, for God's sake. And then look what happened. They immediately get ambushed and have to jump into hyperspace, leaving all the kiddies to die. I guess she taught them a lesson they'll never forget. As soon as someone becomes a politician, or morals go out the window. Arr. Apparently this guyish guy is a super smart billionaire genius man. I guess he'd be the equivalent of Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk. If I landed back on Earth in the midst of a bunch of nukes going off and I look around and see those Musk and Zuckerberg fellas trying to get on my ship, I sure as hell wouldn't be giving up my seat. But I would be giving up my fist, directly into their smug faces, up to the bone! Normally I wouldn't condone violence, but at the end of the world, who wouldn't want to suck into a few billionaires? Where's your dogecoin to save you now, musky pants? Ahem. My favourite character, though, was the old guy who blew all the firefighters out into space. That was some cold-ass shit. He did well in Washington. Ah! I can't believe they were all looking for a human Cylon, and nobody suspected the gorgeous woman strutting around the place in a bright red fancy dress. Arr! Wait, she was in his head the whole time? Even when she mounted his lap and touched his pee-pee? What if that's been happening to me my whole life, Agnew? 
What if I was never married to Bridget Bardot and the whole thing was a result of a microchip implanted into my mind decades ago? Nah, that would just be silly. Even I can't touch my pee-pee that good. Arr. I also loved how they make you think that that PR guy was being set up, but then it turns out he was one of them the whole time. That bait and switch was awesome. It reminds me of that NBC show, Heroes, in the way that season one set itself up like it was going to be an awesome show, and then it devolved into a half ass shit fest where everyone turns out to be related to each other, featured repetitive plots where no one ever stays dead, and ended the series with a story about circus freaks and a deaf woman who has the magical powers of seeing music. <sighs> anyway, I can't believe the devious Cylons took a page from our playbook and bugged the control deck of the Galactica ship. We should be demanding royalties from this crap, damn it. Arr! That Captain Adama guy clearly isn't that observant. He spends most of his time in that room and he never spotted the Cylon device. What a disgrace. And then he runs into that criminal guy whose face starts melting when the ion radiation cloud begins affecting him. And it's only at that point that Adama thinks, hmm, there's something kind of off with this guy. And then he beats him to death with a flashlight. Reminds me of that time we got drunk and did the same thing with that smelly hobo outside of Spearmint Rhino on vacation in London. <laughs> Arr! Did, oh, yes, quite right. We don't talk about that anymore. Oh, we can just cut that out, right? So then there's a final space battle with seriously dated special effects, and this genderbender Starbuck fella rams Apollo's ship back into the Galactica's hull like an overly aggressive sperm to an egg, and the fleet escaped deep into uncharted space. Man, it's sentences like that, which is why I love me some sci-fi. Then Adama makes a totally awesome speech about trying to find a place called Earth, even though it's later revealed to be a total myth. Just like Dwayne The Rock Johnson's acting ability, or the female G-spot. Arr! Oh, that's right. Adama goes into his quarters and finds a mysterious note. What did it say again? Oh, yes. There are only twelve Cylon models. Hmm. That's going to make for a really short season of The Cylon's Next Top Model. Oh, and then the ending. Where it's revealed the Asian chick who looks a bit like the Yellow Power Ranger from back in the day. is actually the Cylon spy embedded within the Galactica crew. Man, I was so sure it was going to be the nondescript straight white guy. Arr? No, not that nondescript straight white guy, who was upset at the other older nondescript straight white guy who blew all the fire crew out into deep space at one time. I mean the captain's son, damn it. Arr. Really? Your money was on the chocolate lady who randomly kissed the president's secretary dweeb? Well, I suppose that makes sense. Number six has always been shown to be fascinated by romance and affection, so that random kiss could have been a clue. But I guess it was a red herring all along. Just like that dodgy fish you ate when we were on our vacation in London, and we had to get your stomach pumped at the local A&E. Well, what do you think, Agnew? Personally, I love this shit. It was ten times better than the 1970s version, with the bug-eyed aliens and the lingering tensions of homosexual undercurrents. Arr? Or was that? I'm thinking of Doctor Who and the main bug-eyed actor with a ponchy scarf. Could be, Agnew. Could be. Anyway, I give this updated gritty production a whopping 8.5 Cylon spies out of 10. Mainly because this post-9-11 series gave no fucks and had the balls to include outright baby killing on primetime national TV. Even Hillary knows to keep that shit tucked away on laptops. Nar. Really? 8.1 out of 10? Well, let me guess. You liked the part where the Cylons played humanity like a second-class fiddle and launched more nuclear bombs than King Jong-un high on coke, but were slightly disappointed about how easily some of the main characters like Gaius was able to escape the nuclear onslaught. Arr! Oh, it's just because there wasn't enough boobies. Well, that makes sense. It was annoying how in the scene where the main woman stripped off, but then the camera went behind her to show her spine laying up red, like it was some advertisement for back pills or something. Oh... Talk about blue balls for the red girls. Well, I guess that's that. It's just a shame it was a one-off miniseries and they never continued the story. I would have loved to know if they ever outed the Asian spy in their ranks. But I guess if they can't even do that now with Swalwell and Fang Fang. Arr! What? They made four seasons of a TV show, a spin-off series, and like three more feature movies? 
Oh my god, Agnew. We gotta go and binge this shit right fuckity now. Quick, Agnew. Turn on the iPlayer before they're deleted from the app. Ah! Wait. How do we know what order to watch it all in? In what part of the timeline do we watch the movies? I'm so confused, Damon. Ah! Ah, forget it. Let's just go watch those Captain Scarlet reruns instead. Those plastic fellas have more acting range than some of these actors here. Especially that child actor with a stupid haircut and ridiculous name. Arr! Boxy, that was it. Who names their kid Boxy? I mean, I know he was a square, but that just seems cruel. We'll see you at the crossroads, 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 see you at the crossroads, crossroads, crossroads.